potential is some very heavy rain, so we'll talk more about that. I'll show you hour by hour what we can expect for tomorrow in the busy tropics as well in just a bit. Jenny? All right, Tim, thank you very much. Columbia County school officials will be keeping track of weekly reports of COVID positive cases broken down by school and whether the case is a student or staff member. News Channel 6's Devin Johnson explains. There's a growing concern of spreading the virus while teachers and students are in school. So the school board has created a COVID-19 tracking chart to ease the fear in the community. We decided that it would probably be best if we could to have a place where we could provide as much information as possible given the limitations of, you know, confidentiality and such, so that people could see. They couldn't just flip back the earth layer. This is part of the school district's effort to help deflate fears among parents and citizens concerned about the county's decision to begin school in early August, partially in person and online. The superintendent of Columbia County Schools says this chart will not reveal any personal information of its students and employees. That if their child were in danger of contracting the virus by having been around that one individual, they would know it because we would have contacted them and their child would be quarantined for 14 days as required by the CDC. If someone at a school tests positive for COVID, contact is made and follow-up letters are sent for those people who have been in direct contact with that person. Families with no connection to the virus positive person will not receive a letter from the school district. And now we would be reporting to our public by having the number, not the name, uh, appear on this chart. Dr. Caraway tells me the goal of the chart is to show people that schools in Columbia County are safe during this pandemic and will not contribute to the spread of the virus. I would still argue that they're probably some of the safest places you can be in the community. And the numbers will be updated frequently on the school board's website. In Columbia County, I'm Devin Johnson, WJBF, News Channel 6. Augusta University is taking a similar approach to keep track of coronavirus cases on campus. University leaders set up a website that gives a weekly update of students, faculty, and staff who test positive. The website also includes a weekly video update from University President Dr. Brooks Keel. Meanwhile, the University of South Carolina is among a handful of universities nationwide implementing saliva tests for COVID-19. The test will be free for students, faculty, and staff on the Columbia campus. Other schools, including Clemson University, are delaying the start of in-person teaching due to the pandemic. Classes started today for the University of South Carolina Aiken. The university welcomed new and returning students to the housing complex during a four-day move-in process following CDC guidelines with COVID-19 mitigation plans to make sure they're taking a healthy approach for students and staff returning to campus. After speaking with our students over the summer, they indicated clearly they wanted to be back on campus face to face. And I'm pleased to report that we have a majority of our students here and moved into the dorms or attending uh, throughout the fall semester. Masks and social distancing will be enforced on campus. For a full list of new rules and regulations, go to our website, wjbf.com. Growing concerns tonight that employees on the front lines are via George Rigodfrey. Godfrey. A special tribute to a local nurse who died after battling coronavirus, Yolanda Kaur died this month after contracting the virus. This morning, many of her colleagues, family, and friends gathered at AU Medical Center for a balloon release. Kaur worked there for 13 years. Her husband talked to us about how she'll be remembered. You just really get an appreciation for the, the love that she had for everybody, now that the love that everybody has for her. Um, you don't realize how far her hand reached until you see something like this. Me knowing her, I was a husband, I know she was a selfless person and was always willing to help. But it's unfortunate times like this that you realize how many people she really did help. Prior to the morning's balloon launch, a moment of silence was observed in memory of Nurse Corps. Are you seeing pink in your neighborhood? Not pink breast cancer ribbons, but these pink plastic bags on your mailboxes. They're soliciting donations for a group called Hope, and our friends at Hope House of Augusta are getting a lot of calls about them. I talked with Chaz Butler, the lead coordinator of compliance and development for Hope House. And she says the pink bags aren't theirs. These pink bags are from an organization outside of Atlanta 
called Hope for Domestic Violence. Um, I think a lot of people get it confused because, again, the word hope pops up and then they immediately think of us, which is great to know that we're on their mind, but no, they are not from us. Butler says if you do want to keep your donations local, just go to the Hope House of Augusta Facebook page and click on their wish list. You can purchase items right there, and Amazon will deliver them to Hope House. Jefferson County was one of the first Georgia counties.